Okay, Corey here, the art archaeologist. So here's this kit all dried and ironed up. Now I did a little kit of eight and a half by five and a half with the hibiscus and I loved it so much. I couldn't believe how nice the results were that I wanted to go ahead and do an eight and a half by 11 full sheet kit for um, to make really nice big junk journal pages. So I went ahead and did it and here it is and it really came out beautiful. And then here's the hibiscus. It's this really bold burgundy color and you don't get that. You get all of these blues. You get all these different variations of blue. It's incredible to me. I was really expecting purple, burgundy, something along those lines like a, a rose pink and none of that happened. So I'm very happy about that. I think it came out really beautiful. Now another thing I did on this kit was I put avocado seeds in the dye bath and I got zero results from it and I'm pretty sure why. I've watched a few videos on the avocado dye and what I found is with the avocado dye is that you've got to boil it. So I will, I think next season, I'm really gonna be focused on natural dyes next season and new species of leaves. So I'm going to boil a big pan of avocado seeds and probably the skins too, cause I've seen a lot of people doing that. And then once I get the color real rich, it's a real pink color. Once I get that nice and rich, then I'm just gonna go ahead and I might stain the papers with it. I might pour it in the dye bath. I'm, I'll probably do both. So look forward to that. If you haven't subscribed yet, I surely invite you to, absolutely. And if I haven't said already, I think I did. This, is, this kit is called Hibiscus Field Number no. Two. And of course it's linked in the description box below. And I did one, two, three, four. I did eight sheets of Canson mixed media paper. And so you get 16 images of that. And then I did, of course, I sandwiched my pages with nine by 12 inch Canson watercolor paper. So this is the watercolor paper here. We'll start with this and go through it. Now the hibiscus comes pretty big and chunky and I grind it down to little pieces because if you put three dimensional, I say this all the time, I know I sound like a broken record, but if you put three dimensional stuff in your kit, then your leaf prints are not gonna come out as good because they need to suction to the paper. So here's some of these beautiful maple leaves here and these have a tendency to come out black. Those of you that watch me know this, I think this is a really beautiful grunge page here. And then here's the other watercolor, and of course I use this to protect the inner sheets from the great marks, broken record. <laughs> oh, this is the inside page of this, and it just really gave me some gorgeous grungy results. I really am happy. And then this, a lot of this spotting showed up right here. And that is the alum sprayed on the papers. And I didn't have any dye to dissipate that alum in this kit. So it really showed up very spotty and grungy and beautiful. You can really see it here. On the little kit, I got in a big rush and when I rinsed them, the pages were really wet on the cookie sheets and I put them in the oven to dry and they got a lot of grunge on them that I didn't want. So I took great care. I actually put these outside in the sun and didn't dry them in the oven at all because I didn't want those brown grungy marks all over the kit. I really wanted the hibiscus blue to show up beautifully. Now all of the yellows, of course, are from the botanicals, the flowers, and the leaves. Here's a bunch of aspen leaves all over this page. And then, of course, here's the front side, the vein side. 
and then here's the back side you get these beautiful silhouettes now i didn't use aspen earlier in this season which i am definitely going to do next summer uh, I'm going to get a whole bunch really early and probably freeze them because by the time I got around to using aspen, they were pretty aged. And when the leaves age, you get a lot more spotting. So I'm interested to see the difference next season of how that goes. Here is just this gorgeous dark blue <laughs> colors on this sheet dancing around with more faded blue, a lot of spotting from the alum. Um, this is from a stem here. I'm really impressed with the natural and I wanna use some chamomile. I don't know if the chamomile is gonna be strong enough to bring results, but I'm gonna try it. I think I might try some different kinds of fruit teas and things like that next season as well. Here's these maple leaves. And again, they just prints, they can really just be so black and um, really too much in a lot of um, instances in my kits. But I like them. They're just, and they, the detail is just amazing, but they are so dark. You know, so it's it's kind of a love-hate thing with that too. So here's another little pocket of some kind of botanical, that yellow. And then this almost looks like a cracked wall here. Sometimes I get rid of this kind of thing, but this is so beautiful and so artful that I will not get rid of that in Photoshop. I only get rid of really blatant black, like blob marks if they show up otherwise I leave stuff and I don't see anything so far in this kit that I will take out so see this corner this is a great example of what I was talking about earlier with the smaller kit I got this all throughout the smaller kit and I I really kind of felt cheated like it kind of ruined it I mean it's still a beautiful kit don't get me wrong but I really, it, it interfered with the blue and the paleness that I was after, you know? So <laughs> that's the perfectionist in me trying to maneuver and dictate results the way I want them to come out. And that is, and I say it all the time, the beauty of this medium because it really cures the perfectionist of perfectionism. You do not have a say in how the outcome is. <laughs> now these um, maple leaves, look at all the purple in here. It, I have gotten, and I almost always get purple. Like I was saying, this is black, but in reality, this is such a deep, dark purple. It's really not black. So you get these dark, dark results. And then if you see this one, this is the vein side of these. And then this one here is the back side, and it came out to be just this beautiful silhouette of color. Oh, all the spatter is really lovely in here. And that is, again, that is all the alum that I spray. I spray alum on the pages to help all the dyes and the um, whatever kind of dyes you get from the botanicals to really adhere to the paper. That's the reasoning behind the alum. You can find it in your spice section. I had somebody tell me who lived abroad that she couldn't find it, that she was going to get it online. I hope she was able to get that. Um, if you're in the States, you will find it in your spice aisle in most grocery stores. And it's real. I just, I have a pro tip video and it's in my eco dye playlist so i go over the alum and ironing and all kinds of stuff in that video it's a really good one 
Here's a bunch of aspen in this page here. Just lovely. Oh, this hibiscus. And I'm going to give another shout out to Nina Rabina because I was watching her eco dye video and she had mentioned hibiscus. I don't remember if she used it or just mentioned it. But she was talking about hibiscus and I had it in my herb stash. I have a big herb stash that I've had for years and I had it and I thought, oh, I'm going to try it. And I am so thankful to her for bringing it up because these are the results I got and these are the results that you can get. This blue is just beyond beautiful and you get so many different hues and um what do you call it? Like tones of blue. Just incredible. And no dye. I'm amazed. There's no dye in this kit. <laughs> it's amazing. Ooh. Okay. This is a tree branch. And look at the beautiful little detail that came through of the veining here and here and a little bit here too. And then look at these maples with all the yellow. Just really, really fun. I am very excited about doing all natural pages next season. I think I've said it enough, haven't I? <laughs> oh, I get excited and I repeat myself. Oh, and then I forget what I say and I want to make sure I cover everything and then I repeat myself over that too. <laughs> Look at this down here. This detail is just really something. Get it way up there so you can see it. So on the right, you get the grungy blue. And on the left, you get the grunge from the alum. Oh, just, I, I, I'm beyond happy with hibiscus. And by the way, Speaking of, I'm talking it up so much. I get my, I got mine at the Vitamin Cottage and I think they still sell it there. I think I saw it a few months back and it used to be a lot less expensive than it is now. Everything has gone up. So, you know, I'm not sure what you're going to pay for it, but I think you could get it in any natural um, grocery store that carries bulk herbs. You should be able to get it there. I have never looked online for it, so I do not know if you can get it online. Here's these beautiful aspens. Now, I think if you get your aspen leaves earlier in the season, you're going to get more of this veining that showed up right here in these leaves and less of the spotting. So to be continued on that, definitely, definitely subscribe so that you can get your answer next season. <laughs> you're going to have to wait, but we wait for our shows to come out, so kind of the same diff. Here is the beautifulness that you can get from the uh, back side of the aspen leaf. Incredible. And this is the last sheet of this. So I am really glad once again that you came by to check this out and ooh and ah with me over this kit. And of course, like it always, it's available at blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. And like all, always, it's available below. So I look forward to you coming back and hanging out with me and doing some more art. I'm going to be doing a lot of really fun stuff this winter. So thanks so much for stopping by, and I will see you soon. Have a great day.